Did the students, teachers, parents, all those out there on the virtual interwebs joining me here at uh, St. Catherine Greek Orthodox Parish in Falls Church, Virginia? Uh, I'm assuming you found this because you're uh, one of the lucky recipients of this link for our new uh, catechetical program, which is to say that our Sunday school, as Father Cuesta had explained in a previous video, is, uh, is, is going to be taking a little bit different and new of a shape here. Uh, and so with that being said, uh, the new platform offers us the opportunity to make resources available to you uh, at really any time. So it's not really Sunday school anymore, unless you're watching this on a Sunday, uh, which is why we've kind of taken to calling it catechetical school, which comes from the Greek word katechesis, uh, which really just relates to a spiritual education, an education which is uplifting, one which is edifying, one which is good for us uh, as, as people, right? As, as, as people, but most importantly, good for us as Christians who are trying to learn more about our faith. Uh, and with that being said, uh, I will not uh, delay any further in introducing this week's lesson, uh, which of course comes to us uh, from this string of parables that exist in Matthew chapter 13. And we move on to the second in these string of parables we covered uh, previously, the parable of the sower, and move on to yet another agricultural parable, which is the parable of the wheat and the uh, the, 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 what we want to call weeds, I guess. Tares is the official word, but we'll call them weeds because I think we're a little bit more familiar with this idea of a weed as opposed to the word tear, which really just is a specific type of weed that we'll get into in just a second. Um, but again, because we have so many resources available for you online, uh, I'll hold off on uh, reading the actual gospel verse and message to you and give you time now, pause me, okay, just like this, and read the, 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 the message which comes to us from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. Uh, so go ahead, pause, read it, okay, and then come back. All right, so you're back. Um, having read this now, uh, there are two things that I would really like to point out that the resources which we have online um, kind of, I don't want to say they neglect because there's so much to talk about in Scripture always. Uh, and uh, so I just want to highlight, I guess we could say, two things uh, from this gospel message, from this parable in particular. Um, and for those who don't know, I'm a bit of a, uh, a word fanatic, especially when it comes to the, uh, the, the Greek language as it's presented in Scripture, which is uh, quite different from modern Greek, uh, which is to say the Greek that we read in Scripture in the Bible is not going to be the same Greek uh, that we hear spoken by Yahya and Papu or uh, in the country of Greece today. Okay, And so that's to say that it requires a little bit more knowledge, it requires a little bit more study, and this is all good because you being good students that you are, are all about studying and learning, okay? Uh, so with that being said, this opening phrase, Umiothi y vasilia ton uranon, Okay, this is, uh, this, is, this is a phrase that is used. And unfortunately, we kind of have missed this point, uh, which is very, very important, okay? Uh, and oftentimes uh, confused in translation, right? Because what our translations will read is, the kingdom of God is like a man. And then it goes on to tell us the parable. But uh, what's missing here, perhaps, is a comma right here. Okay, because what follows is ton uranon anthropon, right, which introduces the man. Okay, and so this is to say that, that uh, whatever is going to follow this little comma that I'm placing right here with my thumb, okay, is being compared to omiothi, which is to say this, the subject which follows the word omiothi, okay is like, all right? 
And so what we're really saying okay, is not that the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is like a man. No. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is compared to or much like the situation of this man. Because again, just looking at this word, anthropon, and knowing what we know about uh, how to conjugate certain words within the uh, ancient Greek language, which I'll spare you the, uh, the, the, the you know, typical sort of word nerd uh, vernacular, okay, uh, by calling this a dative noun, which is to say that this noun is made clear by the way in which it is spelled and specifically by the way in which it ends, okay? Um, it's made clear to us that this is a noun which is, it's the uh, indirect object, okay? So the direct object being the kingdom of heaven, all right? And the indirect object being, okay, this here, the, uh, the, the man, all right? So what we're really saying is that this parable, okay, the parable of the tares and the wheat or the weeds and the wheat, okay, uh, this is much like how we are to understand the kingdom of heaven. And another thing about this word omiothi, which is very important that we also grasp, uh, is this reality that omiothi doesn't mean just like uh, it is going to be this way, but rather that it is this way, which is to say that the kingdom of heaven is something that is going to exist in the future, right? As far as we know it as human beings, but it is also something that exists right now. Okay, so there's a good question. Uh, parents, I hope you're paying attention, right? Because this, this becomes your lesson, really, parents, okay? This is the parents teaching the kids and talking to your kids about scripture, which is such a beautiful thing. And so in this way, we can think of this uh, new arrangement as a bit of a blessing, right? Because finally, as families, we're being given an excuse to talk about scripture with our families. And so this is a good question that we should ask, uh, which is to say, how? How is the kingdom of heaven in existence now and how is that kingdom of heaven different from the kingdom of heaven as it exists in the future right because what we're told now and the second point that i really want to make here is this idea of the tares and the wheat right so we know that there aren't going to be any weeds proverbial weeds okay uh, any bad things in the future kingdom of heaven right which is to say, if this is something that is, if this parable is being used to describe something that is like the kingdom of heaven, then how, how we're understanding this is to say that in its present form, there exists both good things, being the wheat, and bad things, being the tares, okay? Um, and so these tares, right, which again, from my, uh, from my, for my plant geeks out there, which I'm also a plant geek, and so it's okay to be a plant geek. I'd like to think that it's cool to be a plant geek, but I don't really know. Um, I just like plants. Uh, the plant that is being referred to most likely here is uh, called a bearded darnel, or the uh, the Latin term of the, the lolium temulentum, right? Um, and so really what we're talking about is a plant that really uh, you can't tell the difference between the wheat and the tear or the wheat and the weed really, okay, uh, until those final last moments of fruition, right, until those final last moments where the plants really present themselves, okay, and so of course the wheat in its final moments, uh, uh, presents itself with these beautiful golden grains of wheat, which we know are things that provide sustenance, things that give us uh, the, the, the things needed to make breads, uh, to, to make things that help us live and grow, um, whereas the tares produce absolutely nothing. Okay, and so this is another point of consideration that I'd like to uh, ask and, and that I'd like to have you all discuss with one another, which is considering this idea that a tear and a wheat, which is to say something bad and something good, 
in their early stages can look very similar, can look even like the same thing, which is to say that something good can sometimes seem like something bad, but then something bad can also seem like something good. And that the big difference here is that in their point of finality, in the last moment of their existence, okay, uh, it's at that point when the distinction is made between what is really good for us and what is not so good for us and really only seeks to destroy, right, or to confuse us with what is good okay and so again these two points of consideration coming to you from father nicholas here at saint catherine's greek orthodox church in falls church virginia uh virtual blessings of the lord to you all uh, and and may you explore this together again as a family as a true united family and, and may we grow together in christ jesus through these beautiful parables that he's left us god bless you all and keep you safe Bye-bye.